This year, the people of Israel will be marking the 40th anniversary of the Yom Kippur War. As Israelis line up for gas masks and worry about a possible attack from Syria in response to a possible attack from the United States, Israelis will be thinking about that terrible Yom Kippur Day 40 years ago when air raid sirens broke the peace of Israel's most introspective and, and inward day. On Yom Kippur 1973, a few hundred Israeli soldiers were positioned along the Suez Canal and on the Golan Heights. Less than 100 tanks stood between the Egyptian army and Tel Aviv. And on that day, we glimpsed something of our possible mortality. Since then, Israelis have asked themselves, what went wrong? How is it possible that we went from the victory of the Six Day War a mere six years before to being caught so off guard and losing nearly 3,000 soldiers and many thousands more injured? How is it possible that the warehouses, the army warehouses were empty, that soldiers being called up for reserve duty didn't have weapons, that we were caught so off guard? After the Yom Kippur War, Israelis came to different conclusions, trying and grappling with that question. Some concluded that the sin of Israel after the Six Day War was arrogance, was an excessive reliance on power. And that became the basis for the reinvigoration of the left, for the emergence of the Peace Now movement. Others on the right concluded that the sin of Yom Kippur had in fact been a kind of complacency, that we weren't sufficiently wary of the dangers that we were facing. And that led to a reinvigoration of the settlement movement. In fact, both the peace movement and the settlement movement emerged as powerful forces, as the forces we came to know, not as a result of 67, but of Yom Kippur 1973. While, while I was researching my new book, Like Dreamers, which is a narrative history of Israel, I was struck by the centrality of Yom Kippur 1973 in Israeli consciousness until this day. If you think of the events that emerged from Yom Kippur 73, the oil boycott and the Zionism racism resolution, the isolation of Israel on the one hand. On the other hand, Sadat's visit in 1977, the visit of, of Egyptian uh, President Sadat to Israel and the subsequent Israeli-Egyptian peace agreement. And for the first time, the possibility of normalizing Israel's position in the Middle East and in the world. Those two polar opposites of Israeli consciousness, on the one hand, the sense of our isolation, a sense of mistrust and wariness toward the world. On the other hand, the sense of possibility, a sense of peace, continue to define the Israeli psyche today. After 40 years of deep and often bitter schism between left and right in Israeli society. Most Israelis today are a kind of convergence, an amalgam of both left and right. On the one hand, a majority of Israelis agree with the left that we need to be open to the possibility of peace. And we remember Sadat's visit and we also remember Sadat's overtures to Israel before the Yom Kippur War, which went unanswered. And so the nagging question, the terrible question that Israelis have carried since the Yom Kippur War was, could that war have been avoided had we been more open to peace? On the other hand, Israelis look at the region today. and We look at the pathology around us, the pathology of, of, of Hezbollah, Hamas, Al-Qaeda in Syria converging on our borders, and that deep sense of fear unleashed by Yom Kippur Day is also being brought to our struggles. In particular, what do we do with the Palestinian negotiations? How far can we afford to let our guard down? How far can we afford to make concessions? 
And so this Yom Kippur, as we struggle with the consequences of that terrible day in 1973, Israelis will be asking themselves, what is the lesson that we've learned? And what is the atonement that we as a people need to make? And I would invite American Jews to join us in that soul searching this Yom Kippur. And for those on the right, perhaps this is the right moment to ask themselves, where does excessive wariness lead us? What are the consequences of close shutting us down to the possibilities of peace? And for those on the left, this is perhaps an apt moment for them to ask themselves, have we on the left sinned in terms of minimizing the threats that the Jewish state has faced in the past and continues to face the wisdom and the maturity to ask ourselves uncomfortable questions about some of our own most cherished beliefs about Israel, then we could truly turn this Yom Kippur into a day of collective atonement. Shana Tovah.